lot can happen between November and September, especially if you're an offshore powerboat racer. During those 11 months, 10 national points races will be held, all sanctioned by the American Powerboat Association. To the ocean racing contingent, this is the championship chase. It's a rigorous test of body, mind, pocketbook, and machine to determine who's the best in the high-speed kingdom of the sea. These ocean-going warriors compete in the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Great Lakes for the right to paint number one on the side of their hull. From Florida to New Jersey, Newport to San Francisco, and even at Cedar Point, Ohio, the thrilling sights and sounds of offshore racing are experienced. The season opener at Key West, Florida was a tortuous trial of rough water. Joel Halpern's new 38-foot Cobra hull pounded to the victory with Bob Nordskog second and Preston Hand third. Paul Cook, sponsor of the annual San Francisco offshore powerboat race, spent most of the 1976 season in the cockpit of a helicopter, coordinating aerial photography rather than behind the wheel of a race boat. The second national point race of the season is already in progress at Marina del Rey, California, and Bob Nordskog's in the lead. Second place belongs to Aussie Arnold Glass, but not for long. Glass is about to collide with a migrating whale, doing damage to his stern drive, but not the map. The rough outer coastal waters of Catalina jostle the crew of Streaker while closing ground in third. Joel Halford maintains a steady pace in fourth. The new Cobra hull shows its best when the water gets lumpy. Larry Woods of Ohio is making his rookie West Coast debut driving Tamarind Sea, a 36-foot cigarette. The tunnel hull Kudu is giving Betty Cook a real workout. Problems in the power steering system are creating handling difficulties for the only woman driver in open class competition. Bob Nordskog's world speed record holding 35-foot cigarette turns at ship rock and heads across the Catalina Channel in search of Palos Verdes Point, still in the lead. Preston Hen begins a dazzling finish line charge in Streaker, in spite of power steering troubles of its own. Hen narrowly slips past Nordskog at the Palos Verdes checkpoint with only 12 miles to the victory flag. But Nordskog has not charged some 150 miles to lose that easily. With both 600 horsepower Mercruiser engines pushed to the firewall, the Powerboat Magazine Special motors back into first place. Streaker is likewise running flat out, but not quite capable of overtaking the determined Nordskog. Beep Beep has lost sight of the leaders, destined to finish third. Bob Nordskog thunders past a thousand spectator craft at Marina Del Rey Harbor. The checkered flag means a lot to this 63-year-old veteran. It's great to win any race, but even though I compete in all types of classes of competition, offshore is my favorite. Race and spectator boats proceed to the start area for the 6th Annual Bushmills Grand Prix at Newport Beach, California. The course is 181 miles of unpredictable salt water stretching south to Oceanside west to Catalina, and north to Long Beach. The pace boat brings a field of 34 to throttle slamming attention. A red flare sends the racing fleet on their way as the biggest viewing audience in West Coast history signals its delight. Streaker grabs an early lead, but 1975 APBA national champion Sandy Satulo moves up quickly in the glassy water. The leaders are in sight, 
Copper Kettle turns first at the Huntington Beach buoy, followed by Streaker, Jumpin' Jack, Powerboat Magazine Special, and Thunderball. Jack Tushinsky's new 35-foot cigarette is really cooking. Satulo continues to hold a slight lead. The turbocharged 40-footer of Pete Rothschild is making a strong bid. Nothing would please him more than a hometown win. It's a tight four-way battle between new leader Jumpin' Jack, Rothschild, Satulo, and Hen on the southern leg to Dana Point. Larry Woods pours the power to Tamarind Seed, trying to make up time. Suddenly, the 36-footer trips over an unexpected wave at 80 miles per hour, sending the hull into a violent 360-degree spin. All three crew members are thrown overboard. Joel Halpern sees the accident and rushes to the aid. Fortunately, all signal that they're okay and climb back aboard to finish the race. Smitty of the Benny Hanna team checks on their competition. The lead now becomes the possession of Thunderballs, one of two turbocharged entries in the race. Jumpin' Jack is out with a blown engine, and Copper Kettle is having oil cooler problems. Streaker now places second, only one minute behind Rothschild. At Avalon, Rocky Aoki turns third, passing an unofficial race entry of the U.S. Navy. Submarines do not qualify under present offshore rules. Betty Cook is still performing well. For today's race, she has switched back to drive Kama, a 36-foot cigarette in place of the more radical Kudu. Rothschild roars on, but problems are brewing in his engine compartment. Benny Hanna takes advantage and grabs the lead. It's a 30-mile dash from Shiprock to Long Beach, and Aoki is not about to let anyone sneak up from behind. Hen is far from out of it. Only two minutes separate the first three boats. Thunderball staggers toward the finish. Beep Beep sprints past into third position. Smooth water conditions have allowed a full throttle race. Rocky Aoki brings Benny Hanna under the waving checkered flag for an exciting come from behind victory, averaging over 74 miles per hour. For the second straight race, Streaker must play the part of the bridesmaid. Newport Harbor comes alive with a victory celebration. Today's win makes Benny Hanna a solid contender for the championship chase. A typical St. Petersburg, Florida welcome for offshore powerboat racing. The Swift Hurricane Classic marks the fourth hurdle on the 10 event National APBA Ocean Race Circuit. The points race at the moment is a tight three way battle between Joel Halpern, Preston Hen, and Bob Nordskog. Kudu, the only offshore tunnel-hulled race boat in the world, is hoisted into the water. It's get ready time for offshore combat. Rocky Aoki and Harold Smith hope to repeat their recent West Coast win. All systems are go in the Benihana cockpit. The course for the Swift Hurricane Classic is both complex and unique. Laps one and two are 15-mile dashes inside tranquil Tampa Bay. Laps three and four consist of long journeys into Boca Ciega Bay, through Mullet Key into the Gulf of Mexico, 187 miles of navigating bewilderment. Today's winner will not be decided on speed alone. Betty Cook, Bill Allen, and John Connor are ready for the challenge. Thousands of enthusiastic fans gather on the St. Petersburg Pier 
pulling for their favorites. All eyes are on the race boats. It's a near perfect lineup for the start. The green flag drops and some 60 spinning propellers churn up Tampa Bay. A four mile sprint to the first turn is won by Jack Kuczynski in Jumpin' Jack. Streaker is second around the buoy with Preston Hand at the controls, while Copper Kettle and Benny Hanna fight it out for third and fourth. Bob Nordskog and Betty Cook follow the leaders only seconds behind. Kudu is the only tunnel boat competing against an armada of deep thieves. Betty Cook is well acquainted with the difference. The ride in Kudu is softer, but it's much more staccato than it is in a deep V. For me, a deep V is much easier to drive. In Kudu, I wouldn't dare let my attention wander even for a tenth of a second. Gunnel to gunnel race Hen, Tushinsky, and Satulo for the lead. Just a breath away is Benny Hanna. Streaker moves into a slight advantage. Betty Cook is having no problem staying with the rapid pace. Fun is over and the work begins. Streaker embarks on the first of two trips out into the angry Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, the rest of the pack prepares for the 70 mile third lap through the Keys. It's times like this that a skilled navigator and a good compass become your very best friends. Here come the leaders. The turbocharged Jumpin' Jack still ahead. Preston Hen's 38-foot Bertram hugs Tushinsky's wake in second. John Corsiglia in Isis has moved up to third with Satulo close for fourth. Benny Hanna readies itself for a long, rough ride, while the leader, Jumpin' Jack, stalls with a blown engine. Streaker now finds itself with the lead. Hen, a Florida resident, knows the coastal waters of his home state. The big Mercruiser powered hull spans the open water waves at over 70 miles per hour. New Yorker John Corsiglia must know something about rough water racing himself. The turbocharged 35-foot cigarette hull hammers its way over the turbulent Gulf Coast, holding down third place. Tulo's copper kettle has a power steering problem. Isis takes over second slot in a hurry. Ken continues to punish himself and his equipment. A win today means taking over the leadership of the championship chase.
Corsiglia is also hungry for victory after a string of no finishes. Aoki is playing it cool in third, waiting to make his move. Joel Halpern and Beep Beep are not holding back. This is just what the native New Yorker has been looking for. Ignoring the worsening seas, Halpern closes on the leaders. Kudu is done for this day, so is Isis. The vicious waters of the Gulf are trimming the field at a rapid rate. Streaker continues its wild act of airplane and submarine. The majestic form of the Skyway Bridge is now in sight. The sheltered water of Tampa Bay is a welcome comfort to Ham and crew. Beep Beep has picked up Streaker's tracks. Halpern still has over 90 miles left to overhaul first place. Hen holds a substantial lead starting lap four, while non-racing crews begin their own brand of pre-victory celebration. Halpern is no longer satisfied with second. Beep Beep demonstrates its uncanny ability to handle the rough like no other boat in offshore. Benihana now places third, unable to gain on the larger hulls. Satula is once again running well, but far behind the leaders. his equipment to the limit. Streaker flies from wave to wave with props spinning in air. Feathering the throttles is a gifted art, but almost impossible when fatigue sets in. Streaker's bid for a win is about to end. A tough break for a gutty performance. It's now home free for Beat Beat. Halpern has proven his point to the offshore clan. Instead of choosing an existing race hall for competition, Halpern felt he could create a new design better than anything presently available. The result was this 38-foot Cobra, a demon for rough water. A weary but happy Benihana team picks up a valued second place. Tampa Bay responds as the winner nears the checkered flag. Beep Beep's twin 600 horsepower engines roar their approval to the crowd as it sweeps past the finish boat. Halpern is now the man to beat in the championship chase. Offshore racing arrives at America's winter escape, Miami Beach. In a matter of moments, the Bacardi Trophy race will be underway. Competitors begin to file past race headquarters at the Four Ambassadors Hotel. Sponsored by Bacardi Rum, this 193-mile jaunt allows shorebound spectators a chance to view the action along the Miami and Fort Lauderdale beaches all the way to Fowey Rocks. Then it's a round-trip Gulf Stream crossing to Bimini for the hardy survivors. It's a wild, dancing start for 30 ocean-going hot rods. Rocky Aoki is charging hard.
Hawaii makes a rare U.S. appearance in his new 35-foot cigarette, American Eagle. Something about Miami offshore racing always seems to attract a big field. Up in the lead, things remain unchanged. Halpern and Aoki shadow each other. More problems for the Kudu camp. Benny Hanna throttle man Harold Smith has the 35-foot cigarette hull flying high in pursuit of Beep Beep. Rocky and Smitty refuse to let up. Riding in a deep V at over 80 miles per hour in rough seas can have its anxious moments. Streaker continues to grind away at the miles in third. Isis fights the building head seas of the Gulf Stream. Halpern still leads, but Benihana's right there. We caught a strange wave and uh, got her completely up on the side. I thought for sure the boat was going to barrel roll. I got down to the floor and I look up at Rocky and he's still driving away, going for the win. He's still trying to get by Beep Beep. Joel Halpern likes the challenge and growth of offshore racing. This year, Beep Beep's competition has been very tough. Halpern notes that more new boats have been injected into the sport this year than were running in the entire year before. Benny Hanna trails Beep Beep by less than a minute. The Miami Beach skyline in the background marks the approach of the halfway point. The toughest is yet to come. Third place still belongs to Streaker. It's Beep Beep turning first, heading out across the Gulf Stream. Aoki is right behind. Streaker is moving up, now in sight of Benny Hanna's wake. The biggest boat in offshore racing, John Barisi's 44-foot La Tortuga, holds down fourth. Italian Giulio De Angelis is still in contention. Benny Hanna has stopped, apparently a problem with a propeller or stern drive. Beep Beep looks like money in the bank. If Halpern can avoid a mechanical malfunction, the Bacardi trophy is his. The island of Bimini is a breathtaking paradise, visited by thousands of mainland tourists each year. Centuries ago, Bimini was a haven for notorious rum runners and smugglers of all description. The only contact made by today's competitors, however, will be a turn around a checkpoint at its northernmost end. So far, so good for Halpern and crew. The lead is comfortably theirs. Streaker's chances of a win are looking slim. Benny Hanna is again underway, but not a contender. Streaker has lost another three minutes after stopping to change a damaged prop. The finish line is close. Can Deep Deep hold on? No, it can't. Streaker has the lead with only five miles to go. Beep Beep has thrown a harmonic balancer on one engine and is limping in. It's a checkered flag for the jubilant Streaker team. Preston Hen has driven a magnificent race. A dejected Halpern takes second. Rocky Aoki closes with a rush for fifth after spending valuable time making repairs. 
However, racing fortunes smile more favorably on Benihana at the Bahamas 500 race, as Rocky takes first, with Han second, Betty Cook third, Bob Nordscott fourth, and Halpern fifth. As the racers prepare to head north to New Jersey, Halpern leads the championship chase with Hen and Aoki hot on his heels. 